Before I start this review, I would first like to say thank you to D3 and 1PR Studio for hooking me up with this review copy of Earth Defense Force Iron Rain. You guys are awesome. Now, onto the review. What's up guys, it's Nova Joe and I'm here to bring you an in-depth review on Earth Defense Force Iron Rain. The last four months have been an excellent time to be an EDF fan. In December, we were graced with the awesome EDF 5, and now in April we have received another EDF title. Earth Defense Force Iron Rain. But will it live up to the standards us fans require from our EDF games? Let's find out. As is the case with most EDF titles, the developer fans have come to know and love is Sandlot. Sandlot has been present since the very beginning of EDF history in 2003. Only taking a brief hiatus in 2011 to allow Vicious Cycle Software to develop the polarizing Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon. After that, Sandlot was back in full swing developing every EDF title that came after that, until now. With this new iteration, developer Ukes was given the reins. Ukes has a very strong presence with wrestling fans as they have made many exceptional wrestling titles for the WWE brand for almost 20 years now, going back to the original PlayStation days. So thankfully, Iron Rain was handed off to a very seasoned and notable developer. However, the real question is, how did they do? First things first, to directly compare Iron Rain to any of the numbered EDF games would be a mistake. This is the same mistake many, including myself, made when Insect Armageddon was released eight years ago. While this is an EDF game, it is a spin-off and should be viewed as a different take on the main formula. It contains many of the same elements, but with a brand new spin that is fresh and different from what we fans are used to. Some will like it, some will hate it. But to truly find out which camp you will fall in, we must take a look at all EDF Iron Rain has to offer. So let's take a look. Let's go ahead and get the negatives out of the way first, starting with the story. EDF has never been known for a flashy, cutscene-laden, heavy dialogue story. However, Iron Rain starts out with what looks to be a more in-depth and involved story. The game starts out with an opening cutscene showing your team. Then the loading screens give us information regarding the members of your team, and even give some fairly in-depth information regarding their personalities. What happens next is a major letdown. These characters, who you were shown pictures of and told about, are then relegated to an off-screen presence where the majority of the conversations you have with them are through radio chatter while you're in battle. You end up not even hearing half of what they're talking about because you're running for your life and there's explosions going on all around you, it just feels like a missed opportunity to really give the EDF franchise a bit more of a cinematic flair. Then again, most of you all didn't come here anyway for the story, so let's move on. Next up is the dialogue. I think it is fair to say that fans of EDF have come to expect goofy, corny, and overtly silly dialogue that is nonsensical and hilarious all at the same time. You can tell that Iron Rain was trying to fit themselves into that formula as well, but the humor came off a bit forced and honestly never gave me a single chuckle. It's kind of like that friend we all have who so badly wants to join into the funny conversation that they, they attempt to, but their attempt just falls flat and leaves everyone feeling a bit awkward and bad for that said friend. Uh, Iron Rain's humor is kind of like that friend. However, it could just be me because, like I said, I never heard half of the dialogue due to it being spoken while I was in the midst of battle, and what attempts at humor I did here just weren't funny. The last issue I have is with some of the weapon sound effects. If EDF is known for anything, it is sheer ridiculousness when it comes to the weaponry. Big guns, big sounds, and even bigger explosions, leaving big messes is what we have come to expect. While Iron Rain gets most of this correct, it drops the ball in the sound department for some weapons. While these guns are potent and leave giant messes of dead insects, crumbled buildings in their wake, they don't completely have the sound effects to match. Some guns do sound good, but a good portion sound weak and ineffective. When I fire an EDF shotgun, I expect my teeth to vibrate and my ears to ring for the next six hours from the sheer awesomeness of the death-dealing blast that I just experienced, and then sit there for the next few seconds with a smile of satisfaction on my face. Unfortunately, that's not what you get with some of the guns you expect it from. Thankfully, this does not plague all the guns as some sound really good, but unfortunately, this can't be said for all. 
there are a few smaller nitpicks I will comment on later but these were just the major ones I wanted to get off my chest they they're the ones that really stood out uh, with that out of the way it's time to take a look at what Iron Rain does right which is quite a bit first off let's take a look at the graphics graphically this is the most visually impressive game in the entire EDF library the alien aggressors, giant robots, and environments all have a high level of detail not seen in the other EDF games. The highly detailed textures on everything enhances the realistic look the art department was going for. Iron Rain also shows off some nicely varied environments. You have the standard cityscape we all know and love, but also desert areas and battles aboard giant warships, plus the inclusion of nighttime levels. Ukes did an excellent job with the damage modeling as well to both the insects, robots, and buildings. Nothing is quite as satisfying as seeing the green gooey bullet holes you've left in an ant or the red hot burning metal of a robot that just took a plasma blast to the chest. I think what is even more impressive is the links they went to to represent this damage on the character models with swords even showing slash marks where they struck. It's a level of detail not seen in a lot of games and a very welcome addition to the EDF franchise. Honestly, I think the damage modeling even tops that of EDF 5 in my personal opinion. Next up is content. Content wise this game comes with 52 missions that at first glance will seem like a negative compared to the 100 plus missions that you got with EDF 5. However, this didn't bother me at all. The 52 missions were really fun and enjoyable levels to play. I honestly can't think of a single level I, I wouldn't mind replaying over and over again. None of them feel like an afterthought, merely there to fill up space. They're all well structured and come with enough enemies to shoot up and blow up uh, that has kept this fan very satisfied and very entertained. I never walked away from a mission board, that's for sure. Another new twist to the gameplay is the way character classes are handled. No longer are you relegated to a female wing diver and male only ranger, fencer, and air raiders of previous titles. Now, regardless of gender, you can play as any of the classes Iron Rain offers, now referred to as PA gear. Basically, you outfit your created character with the PA gear of your choosing. Starting with trooper gear, which offers a nice range of defense and mobility, but comes with the ability to carry more items into battle than any of the other classes. It also possesses a dodge move that will allow the user to move out of the way of incoming attacks quickly. This is your all around standard gear, the, the one that you're going to want to use if you're new to playing these type of games. Next up is the Jet Lifter, which has the best mobility out of all the classes and gives the user the ability to fly and boost dash. Just be careful though as using the flight and boost dash abilities drains the energy meter quite quickly and when drained it leaves the user completely vulnerable to attack so if flying around is what you like to do then this is the gear class for you if hitting hard is your style then you will want to check out the heavy striker gear it offers the best defense out of all the gear classes but has the lowest item carrying capacity the major perks to the heavy striker are its ability to dual wield any weapon selected for it thus doubling its firepower and its E-field ability, which allows the user to block any incoming attack as long as energy remains in the gauge. The E-field comes in very handy when using extremely explosive weaponry, as you can put up your shield and then blast enemies at point-blank range and never fear taking any damage from the blast. You will be knocked back, but you will take no damage at all. Lastly, we have the Prowl Rider gear, which has a nice blend of stats when compared to the other PA gear classes. What sets this gear apart is the E-Needle, which allows the user to go full attack on Titan within Iron Rain and zip across the screen attaching to walls and enemies and getting to the tops of buildings with ease. However, that's not where it stops for the Prowl Rider though, as the user has the ability to call in a very powerful but very unwieldy insect steed called a G-Liar. A G-Liar is an ant, spider, or scorpion that you can ride and attack with. Controlling the G-Liar takes practice and does have a tendency to get stuck on rubble, but make no mistake, these rideable buggers pack a punch and can easily turn the tide of a battle in your favor. Now some of you are probably wondering where the Air Raider type gear is. Well the truth is, they are all Air Raider type gear. The way this works is that vehicles and airstrikes can be equipped by anyone. You simply choose which ones you want by going to equipment and then selecting items. 
You can choose from a wide array of mechs, tanks, aircraft, turrets, mines, and airstrikes. Now the satellite strikes, on the other hand, are located under the weapons category and can also be equipped by anyone. This adds a new dynamic to the gameplay, especially for those who love the Air Raider style class. Another major positive is the fact that we get a slew of new insects and aliens to fight. Of course you have your standard ant and spider, but now you also get bomb beetles, death stalkers, also known as scorpions, wing dance, zombie versions of some of these. Just wait till you see a zombie death stalker, it is creepier than you would think. Not to mention new alien types such as the Sidero and the awesome looking Bazile. Think Organis, only more Godzilla-ish. Let's not forget the fun to fight Scourger, which has a very satisfying death animation that ends with a nice explosion. Not as nice as a Hector exploding, but still very satisfying. Customization is also a new and welcome addition to the EDF franchise. In Iron Rain, you start out by picking whether you're a male or female character, and then choosing their hairstyle right down to their eye color, followed by picking out clothing for them from headgear, upper and lower body, and face accessories. The cringe is definitely real when you slap some hot pants on your macho bug slayer and in the color of your choosing to boot, which, uh, yeah, there's no uh, hot pants going on my guy. However, one gripe is that there is no color customizer like EDF5 has. You are given eight color options for each clothing piece, and that's it. No neon green and orange combo for me, unfortunately. However, fear not, the limited clothing options you start out with are easily remedied. As you play through the missions, you will be unlocking new clothing options to outfit your character with. It's always exciting to see what new clothing pieces you unlock at the end of a mission, and there are quite a few of them to unlock. Also, I want to briefly touch on the multiplayer. I played through 10 missions with randoms and had a good time. It has a unique revival system that allots each player a certain amount of revives that don't require the assistance of another player. The one downside to multiplayer is regarding communication. We have a communication wheel that has a limited amount of options, but at the time of this review there is no option I can find that will allow us to customize the wheel with our own phrases. It's very lacking in the communication area when compared to past games. Could be they are expecting the players to use their headsets more with less use of pre-programmed messages. However, I don't know, uh, I kind of associate EDF camaraderie with those numerous pre-programmed messages not to mention the message bubbles that pop up when we send those messages. Then again, this is a different EDF, so this may not bother everyone. Just a personal view of mine. Now, if there's one thing EDF games have been known for throughout the whole series, it's the grind. Whether it is grinding for armor boxes or grinding to get that last weapon, us fans know that a major part of the fun is spending countless hours, hundreds of hours, getting our armor to ridiculous levels or grinding the heck out of Machine Squad or Golden Darkness in 4.1 for that elusive Lysander Z. Ukes understood that draw of the previous titles and included their own version of the grinding to Iron Rain. Some will like the change and others will hate it. I for one am kind of neutral. I don't hate it and I don't love it. The grind in Iron Rain is not for armor boxes or weapon boxes, it is for credits and gems. Credits are received at the end of each mission and gems are acquired from the fallen enemies. You then use the credits to buy yourself more armor, maxing out at a whopping 10,000 armor points. However, getting 10,000 armor points won't come cheap and you will have to grind your guts out to get the nearly 4 million credits that you'll need to purchase it. I put almost 17 hours into the game so far and have acquired just under 1 million credits. So as you can see, this is going to take a while. Thankfully though, you get more credits based on the difficulty each mission is played at. Now weapons on the other hand are acquired once you complete a mission, and the weapon you get is dependent on the difficulty level the mission is completed at. But acquiring a weapon does not mean you get to use it yet. This is where the gems come into play. Once a weapon is acquired, you have to purchase the weapon with credits and gems. Some of these weapons are extremely expensive and cost hundreds of thousands of credits, plus a very large quantity of gems before you can use it. So while you are still grinding for armor and weapons, you just have to go about it in a different manner. Whether this is good or bad is completely up to personal opinion. On a separate note, I would like to point out something else about acquiring weapons. Like I stated earlier, the difficulty level determines which weapons you acquire at the end of a mission. 
However, unlike previous titles, you cannot keep replaying a level on, say, hard difficulty and expect to get more hard level weapons each time. Once you have acquired the hard level weapon that mission has to offer, you will no longer receive a weapon from that mission on the hard difficulty. You will have to pick a different difficulty. This has been my experience in all the hours I've put into the game so far. This isn't something that I've gotten confirmed by Ukes or D3, it's just what I've experienced from my time with the game. So, replaying a level on a certain difficulty repeatedly only gets you the credits at the end as well as the gems you acquired. So, in the end, is Iron Rain a hit or a miss? In my personal opinion, it's a hit. The more I play it, the more I'm finding myself addicted to the very enjoyable and very satisfying gameplay, as well as my desire to test out all the new weapons I keep getting. I love the little touches such as the exploding bugs hurting others around them or the mechs exploding and taking out a row of buildings in the vicinity. Or how about the fun of unlocking new outfits to goof up my character with? I'm having a blast and honestly isn't that really why we play EDF in the first place? We play it because it's fun and this game has that in spades. So if you're wanting another EDF 5 or EDF 4.1 you're probably going to be disappointed. But if you're wanting another fun game in the EDF series that offers you something a bit different but not too different, then give this game a try. The bugs are there, the weapons are there, the devastation is there, and most importantly the fun and replayability are there. Just remember you're not playing EDF 5, you're playing its equally cool sibling that while different is still a load of fun. Is it worth the asking price? In this fan's opinion I say yes. Oh yeah, the weapon names are Insect Armageddon Levels of Terrible. With names like AE50YGD and the SP Assassin and the FX Xerxes Largo, I can't help but understand my tongue's refusal to say these words clearly or at all. The names are not user friendly to say the least, but in the end, as long as they blow the slime out of an ant, I can deal with it. So, anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this review, and as always, take care. God bless and keep on gaming. I'll see you on the battlefield.